subjectification, and regimes of signs. We're going to be looking at two diagrams that they have here in the plateau or the chapter, and I'm going to kind of be explaining them. It shouldn't be too long, and I'm also going to connect this to one of the diagrams, one of the few, maybe the only diagram in Anti-Oedipus, to help explain what exactly Dulles and Guattari are so worried about with the development of territory. If you've stumbled upon Dulles and Guattari and are maybe a little bit confused, what are they all in a tizzy about? They're very wary of the idea of codified systems of signifiance, for example, such as Oedipus or the phallus. The idea that we can interpret a dream and we can impose upon that dream the interpretive schema of the signifier, that is Oedipus, and we can overcode the content of the dream, so to speak, such that it is interpreted through the hermeneutic of Oedipus, for example. And in, for example, the second plateau on one or several wolves, they critique this for taking a dream that potentially has a number of different ways in which it connects to other assemblages in real life and maybe what it is trying to say. They want to say that the way that we figure out what the dream quote-unquote really means, if we can even use that term, is not necessarily to impose some structural order, but rather to see exactly what kind of lines of flight is this drawing? In what ways is this displaying rhizomaticism? 